So it's been five months, almost to the day actually, that I've had my Fujifilm X-E4 digital camera. I sold my Sony a7 II for this camera, and since then, I have been questioned quite often about this purchase. Why would I go from full frame to APS-C? And why would I switch from a feature-filled camera to a camera that a lot of people complain is lacking functionality? And I have my reasons. Overall, I just genuinely love how this camera works and feels, and it's you know, a joy to use. And when I first got it, I was really excited. I mean, as excited as you can be when you get a brand new digital camera. And since then, the honeymoon phases came and went. And, and I'd really like to talk about how I feel about this camera since that initial excitement has come and gone. Because frankly, it seems like a lot of people wanted me to not like this camera for some reason. It seems that a lot of people saw the initial reviews and saw, you know, the overall design and kind of shied away from it because of the lack of certain dials and certain features. And I totally understand that. I get how, you know, you get used to having certain features on a camera and you kind of miss those things when they're gone. Or you think you're going to miss those things when they're gone. For me, that really wasn't the case. I mean, my a7 II was feature rich. It had more dials and buttons than a freaking spaceship. And I don't miss any of them, not a single one. Real quick, let's address, you know, a, a little bit more specific about this, those issues. People were a little apprehensive because this camera doesn't have a back dial. This camera doesn't have a manual uh, focus switch, right? You know, switch between uh, auto continuous, auto single and manual focus. And that you kind of had to dig into the menus a little bit to get into some things, right? To get to video mode, you have to go into the, you know, drive menu. I've yet to really be inconvenienced by any of those things. Do I think that a manual um, focus mode control switch would have been a great addition to this camera? Um, even as something like the X100 series that has the little switch on this side of the camera. Yeah, I would totally welcome that. I think that that would make this camera near perfect for me. Fujifilm has done something really nice here where they allow you to set the camera up really easily and the workarounds for a lot of these things make a lot of sense and it doesn't feel like you have to really dive into menus or take a lot of time to kind of get into these things, to, to change certain things. You also have the advantage of having a lot of lenses with a physical aperture ring. You also have to remember that the sensor in this camera is the best APS-C sensor that Fujifilm has to offer right now. You really can trust this camera to make a lot of the decisions for you and it works just exceptionally well. As much as you might think that you have to engage with the camera more because there are less buttons and dials, I find it to be kind of the complete exact opposite. I'm just kind of letting the camera do some of the work for me. And I'm focusing more on actually shooting, you know, framing, composition, color, light, those sort of things. Now this is all a case of personal perspective too. You gotta remember that my favorite cameras to shoot on are these film cameras, simple, you know, a couple controls, shutter speed, aperture, ISO is set for you. Maybe you have exposure compensation. I mean, my Canon P has the shutter speed setting and aperture on the lens and th that's it. There's there's nothing. I, you know, the XD11 and my XK are about as fancy as it gets. There's there's not much going on up here and in terms of features, it's, it's pretty simple compared to today's digital cameras. So to have things like this manual clicky shutter speed dial and well, not on this lens, but you know, a physical aperture control ring, it's, it's so welcome. It's such a, you know, I, Fuji did this on purpose. It's a tactile experience and I, and I like that. It reminds me of, of shooting a film camera. I think we all kind of need to remember that those features, right? All those extra dials, those buttons, those drive modes, those all those interesting things, those e that ease of use stuff, right? That stuff gives us easier possibility, not ability. Those features do not make you a better photographer. They allow you to do more complex things more easily, for sure. So for my use case, you know, I'm a hobbyist, I'm not a professional. I, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm a, you know, like, a, like an amateur, but, a, but I do photography enough where I want good equipment. But in real world, real use case scenarios, you know, this 
fits all of my needs just perfectly. I, I, I haven't missed that back dial. I haven't really craved that manual uh, focus mode switch. It's the camera has never gotten in my way. In fact, it's been out of my way. And that's probably, you know, the thing that I like the most about it. And I understand, you know, like ergonomically, it, it wasn't perfect. Um, when I first picked it up without the thumb rest and without the grip, it really actually reminded me of the Canonette ergonomically, which isn't saying much, but adding the thumb rest and the grip, uh, I, these are third party right? This is not official Fujifilm stuff. I know a lot of people complained that when this first camera first came out, they had to buy the, the Fuji brand uh, thumb rest. It was something like 90 bucks. It was something absurd. I did not spend a lot of money and, and it's, you know, it's really solid and it, it helps, especially with a slightly larger lens, uh, like the 18 to 55. I mean, it's not huge, but it, it does make a big difference. I, you know, ergonomically, I find it totally, totally fine. I mean, it's, it's light. It's easy to carry around. It's ergonomically, I think it's, more usable than the Sony a7 II. I mean, that camera had complete and utter dog shit ergonomics. And things like the Q menu and the physical dials just make the ease of use really, really simple. And, you know, I find myself setting the camera up for certain situations that I know I'm gonna use it in and I press the button, you know, find my Q menu setting and I, and I go and shoot and I, and I enjoy it. You know, overall image quality is fantastic. Lenses are great, sharp, uh, relatively compact the whole the whole package you know is is really nice and easy to carry around i actually took it on vacation for the first time a couple weeks ago and I, I i really enjoyed using it i brought this lens and i have the uh samyang and i have the the samyang 12 millimeter i brought this lens the 18 to 55 and the samyang 12 millimeter um it was so, so easy to carry around. It, it weighs, it weighs nothing. I mean, it was fantastic to be able to get the top tier of Fuji image quality in this small light package. And I'm really happy to say that after five months, now that the honeymoon phase is over, the excitement is gone. I'm very happy with my decision. I think, I, I, I think what's really an issue with this, right? Is that people are thinking that this is getting too close to the phone camera, that the shooting experience is becoming too simple and that the camera is doing too much of the work for you. And I have to kind of disagree. I mean, the shooting experience doesn't have to be complicated. Again, film cameras are simple. They have very little in the way of features and settings and people make beautiful, wonderful images with them. And professionals were using them for decades and were capturing things that people use, you know, fancy features to capture now. And, and people were doing that analog, manually with pure skill. It's just a great reminder, this camera, that, you know, the digital camera experience does not have to be an overly complicated, overly technical process. It can be simple and enjoyable, and you can focus on the fun parts of photography, not the fiddling with buttons and menus, the, you know, just the, the, the pure part of it, the shooting, the, the enjoying being out in the environment. And I think for me, this camera, you know, really captures that. I, I struggled so much with digital photography for so long. It was just not something that I cared to do. And I think it was because I was so focused on, on the, the buttons and the features and the, the fancy things, the things that the camera can do. And a lot of that stuff got in my way. So the point of this rambly, ranty talk about this camera is that is that maybe you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, right? Maybe you shouldn't judge a camera by its amount of dials. And, you know, have it, holding a camera in hand and using it for an extended period of time is, is very different than seeing a review on YouTube. I'm really glad that I didn't listen to a lot of the naysayers. I'm glad I went with my well-informed, you know, decision, right? I didn't make the decision to buy a new digital system lightly, but I'm glad I went with the camera that you know, the camera that spoke to me, the camera that when I picked it up and I brought it up to my face, I said, yeah, like this, this feels right. I mean, sure, in this price range from Fuji APS-C, the XS10 would have been better for my needs, right? It would have been a better video camera because it is in-body image stabilization and this camera doesn't. And it would have been equal in terms of image quality, but it felt like I was picking up this the Fuji version of my Sony a7 II and it felt like nothing to me. It felt 
just ugh, felt like a piece of tech. Didn't feel like a camera that sparked that creative excitement to go out and use it. I have to say that I've probably used this digital camera more in five months than I ever used my Sony a7 II. And if that doesn't really like drive my whole point home, I don't know what will. So thanks for sticking around on this rant about, you know, my choice to buy this camera. You know, use the gear that you want, the gear that you're gonna enjoy, not the gear that all the YouTube reviews tell you to use, right? That's, that's the point. Anyway. Thanks. Thanks for sticking around. I know this one was kind of rambly and ranty, but I appreciate your time. Um, you know, hopefully I'm going to do kind of a more in-depth full review of this camera in the future. I, I really do love it. But for now, you know, now that the honeymoon phase is over, gotta say, I, I made the right choice. I'm, I'm really happy. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.